Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to a new video. This is the third video of this YouTube series where I'm going to explain how to make a progressive house. Okay, in the last video we saw how to make the drop, how to get the leads, the chords, the baseline, and how to um, mix them, how to apply effects to them. And in this video we're gonna see how to continue working on the drop to make it sound uh, powerful because you just cannot um, put uh, the leads and so on and with, with just one kick and just leave it like that because it's not gonna be interesting and the people is gonna uh, get uh, bored with the drop really fast. We need to add little things, we need to add noises, um, uh, special effects and so on. So don't wait more and let's go to the video. All right, so first of all, I have to say that I rendered the leads, the chords on the baseline, so I didn't use that much VSTs and you, and I don't have any problems with the CPU. I forgot that I had another channel where I just applied a simple key to mix a bit and cut some resonance to limit the bass line. I use this little uh, stereoized thing because if you have a mono signal, even if you boost this to the max, you're not gonna uh, make it wider, okay? You need to apply the stereoized thing and just the volume shaper. Okay, what do we need first to uh, make the drop interesting, okay? To, to make it powerful and with a lot of energy. The first thing I would say is to add some uh, impacts on the drop, okay? Some white noises. So for this track, I decided to um, put this exhaust, okay, impacts, uh, down, down sweeps, however you want to call it. Okay, um, they cover these different areas more or less. They are, um, they cover the top highs, but for example, this one has more mids than this one. Okay, and they are just uh, really simple things, EQ. Kickstart to give side chain. This second one doesn't have anything. This third has just an EQ. And this three goes to this bus where I have an EQ, OTT, Saturn. So I uh, I give more um, saturation and high end. And another kickstart. Okay, I wanted this first to uh, have more side chain to give more rhythm. So now it has like this before after okay it adds a lot of, lot of energy and i decided to um put it in every four bars so now here i give that energy back again at this point i th i thought that these impacts were nice but they didn't cover all the the space i wanted okay so i decided to put some crashes without the crashes with the crashes it gives a, a different feeling and covers a space that the impact doesn't cover. The EQ is really simple, it's just uh, uh, taking out some resonance. And what I did is to put some uh, crashes uh, in reverse. So for example here, that the middle of the drop is coming, I have this uh, going up, so it's like uh, it gives the feeling that something is coming. And also in every two bars. Okay, but you may think, uh, why do you have this going up if you don't have something going down? So for that, I decided to add this. This is a noise splash. I think I took this from uh, uh, the stems of one of Chacontoria's tracks. It's really simple, but it gives uh, something else, you know? With the impacts, I, I just have it on the first and the fourth bar, and I added this in every bar. So it's like in every bar, you give the energy, in, you know, because the melody, You know, it's like you know. Every time you you uh, you come back to the first note and you go up, okay. So with that, you know, you give that feeling. It's not really loud because I didn't want it so loud. Just to uh, make you uh, feel it, but don't really hear it. That's just a really simple EQ and a bit of side chain to doesn't interfere with the kick. And if we combine all of this, okay, it, it, now it's like that. If we listen to the track without these effects, it's like this, but with the effects.
you know, it gives a lot of energy and makes it uh, keep moving. Okay, so in every bar you have something. In this bar we have the impacts, in this bar we have uh, this splash and something going up, then something going down, again something going up, you know, you have a lot of things going on. But this wasn't enough, okay? I, I thought that I, I needed some some precautions to, to cover more space, to give a feeling, to add something else. First of all, I decided to add, to add just this uh, simple ride. Really simple cue, a bit of setchain to cover to don't interfere with the kick, and this goes to this bus where I have reverb, a bit of compression, EQ, OTT, and Saturn to give um, that energy again, a bit of limiting, and this is a filter. And a thing I like to do is that, as you can see here, I didn't cut all the samples so what you can do is just go here and uh, click on cut itself this way every time the sample plays it's cutting the the previous sample okay so you don't have any problem it is nice but in the second part in the second part of the drop i i wanted to add um, some more percussions to give more rhythm and something different so uh, we have different parts on the drop so uh, to make that i just added some little hi-hats Okay, this tambourine that makes uh, the track uh, goes faster. Okay, and this um, loop that gives um, that has claps and also of of beat hi hats. If we take out all of the things. It's like this, but if we have all of these things, it has a lot of more energy, you know? It's uh, interesting all the time because every in every bar you add something. Here you add this uh, splash the, uh, and and this uh, crash, reverse cr crash. Here you uh, you take out the kick, here you add the, all of these percussions, uh, you know? You keep adding things, but this is not enough, okay? I wanted to make something with the bass line, so... I decided to put this pitch bend, okay, if you don't know how to add the pitch bend, in, it's really simple. Here, you go to silent, move this, okay, tools, last tweak, and create automation clip, okay. And what this does is to um, change the pitch of the, of the note you're playing, okay, so you, you can do things like this. If you have good speakers, I, I just explain it. Here it goes down, up, up, down, and down. Okay, so you give some movement to the to the to the sub bass, and here also with the leads. Okay, it's like it goes up, like one. Okay, like a little effect. We need to add more things. Okay, to keep the track interesting. So here on on the on the eight bar of the drop. Okay, so in the middle of the drop, with the leads, I I did just little little things. I added more reverb. Okay, and I cut them here. I cut that the reverb here, and I added um well I cut the 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 side chain, and I added here just a little filter to make it like with the reverb uh, make the leads go. You know, they go to to the background. Okay, and it is something different with this. Okay, so now the track is a lot more interesting, but I wanted something else. So I, I exported here this. Um, these are little effects I like to put in uh, every two bars on the track. So here you have the things I used, okay, in every two bars. Maybe you don't really hear it if you don't uh, take care, but it makes the things going on, okay? What you have here first is these two claps. And I added this one. Okay, so combined. Then here just this. And then here this. So the all together. 
This is the la this is the same as here, but this one is different. Okay, and then here this. Okay, so with this thing, what we do is to add uh, something new every two bars. Okay, uh, adding it every bar maybe it's too much. Every two is is pretty nice, but I'm talking about percussions. Okay, but because I also try to add something new every two bars with the noises. Let's play with the kick and the right. Okay, so it, uh, it keeps adding things so you make the, the track interesting every time. So if we play all together. And also here, I had this, uh, this is uh, the, the snares of the builder, but they are filtered. Uh, we will talk about these snares later, I just bounce at them. Okay. It's almost done, okay? I just uh, uh, I wanted to add something else. This is just a riser the, that I used in the build-up. So, you know, uh, hearing this, you know something is coming so, uh, to another section of the track. And the last tip to make the track uh, sound full okay is that uh, with this impact or crashes you have something that uh, um, sounds and then it goes out okay so for example here you don't really have a uh, white noise going on okay and white noise gives a lot of energy so I wanted to give that energy so with this noise going on all the time you give that energy but the problem is that this noise is mono so what I had to do is to clone the noise okay and put it one to the right and one to the left but if you do this it's also mono so what I did is on the second one I just reversed it because it's just um, white noise okay it doesn't care if you reversed or not so now it's a stereo and this way it covers a lot more space for example let's put this part And also you can do that with uh, crowd effects because with this uh, you cover the the top, the top end okay of the spectrum but you don't cover the mid section and sometimes I like to add some uh, crowd effects and to use these crowd effects what uh, I like to do is sometimes I put like uh, claps for the crowd or using this kind of crowd effect Okay, like an ambient effect, and this kind of crowd effects really covers a lot of uh, mix section. Okay, but I thought that I didn't didn't really need that because I really have a lot of uh, impacts, crashes, this uh, drop splash, these effects here, uh, the percussion. So I had a lot of things, and I didn't really need um, that crowd effect. Okay, guys, so we started here. And now we are here. So just uh, have these things in mind, okay? You need to add uh, some impact, some white noise to cover uh, the top end because the, that is what really gives energy to the track. The white noise gives a lot of energy, so for that reason I added this white noise and all of these impacts and crashes. And try to add things in every bar, like for example this drop splash, or every two bars like these percussions, okay? This way you have something new every time, so the track keeps interesting and people don't really get bored, okay? You maybe, if you listen to a track or somebody is listening to your track, maybe they don't really um, hear these little things going on here, or this crisis and reverse, but if those things aren't there, they will realize, okay? They will say like, Does, this doesn't sound good, doesn't have energy, is bored, okay? But if you give them those little things, they won't get bored that fast, okay? Um, and they will feel that the track has a lot of energy. So try to add things, experiment, not only um, white noises and percussions, okay? Try also things like on the sub bass or um, the river by the here on the leads, Little things like that, okay, and this gives to your track 
something new, something fresh. So this is the end of this uh, video. If you have any ideas that I didn't use here, um, just leave it in the comments, okay? So we all know can learn from each other, okay? Leave me in the comments also if this uh, helped you, okay? Try on your track and tell me, hey, it helped me a lot. Now my track sounds a lot better or my track sounds worse with these things. So if you liked this video, just leave a like. If you don't want to miss any of this kind of tutorial, subscribe to, to my YouTube channel. Um, every week, new tutorial about how to make progressive house, okay? On the next tutorial, probably I'm gonna uh, start with a breakdown and we will go from the breakdown to the build up so we have a uh, breakdown build up and the drop and just that leave a like subscribe follow me on instagram on facebook on soundcloud everywhere okay check my tracks on spotify and guys see you in the next video